All right, welcome back everyone. So we've got yet another new model for you. So this is a brand new model. It's not an update to an existing one. This is what is gonna be called our 263 PI. So it's not a 263 DPI, 263 PI. It is based on the 262 Cyclone. Uh, a lot of the same menu, um, even as our, our 253 DPI, the, the Thunder 255, a lot of the same menu features. Uh, the 263, uh, for those of you that kind of pay attention, we have 253 DPI, 353 DPI. We now have the 503 DPI. The three signifies that it is a pulse MIG machine. So 263P pulse, not DPI for dual pulse. So brand new unit for us, I said based on the 262 Cyclone. Uh, but this unit does now have lift TIG, DC lift TIG and it has a uh, synergic single pulse. So we do have the, uh, the power set mode available with our single pulse. So let's go ahead and we'll focus on the screen. We'll go through some of the settings, show you guys how this unit works. And again, we'll go through the, the save and recall menu, uh, show you guys how that operates. It is quite a bit different than the previous Cyclone models. So we'll show you guys how to interact with that and, and set up custom programs. All right, so let's start with rolling through our menu. So along this top bar here, we have all of our processes. So argon CO2 mixes, 100% CO2. We have our synergic pulse, aluminum, stainless steel, flux cord, no gas, flux core with gas and dual shield. We also have DC TIG lift start, uh, which is going to be like a true like scratch start um, using a dry rig or a TIG rig. So that does come included with the machine. It will come with a valve in body uh, TIG torch. So for you guys that are doing like sanitary work or uh, something like that, where you want to have a TIG rig, uh, this machine does come with that option now as well. And of course, like always DC stick mode. So let's go ahead and jump over. We're already on the Argon CO2, so we don't have to swap. So let's go through and show you how to operate this menu. So we have our, our two down buttons. We have our over arrows, so they, so they control each side. So we can press down, that'll highlight our voltage. Obviously we can adjust our volts just like normal. We press down again, it goes to the second tier menu. So we can scroll, we can change our ending wire feed speed. If we wanna scroll over, we just hit the over button. So we got our post flow, we can turn it up to you know three seconds. We got our pre-flow. If we wanna go down and control our upslope and downslope, we just press down and then we can cycle back up to where we're adjusting our voltage. If we come over to the right side, same thing. We can just press down. That opens up our menu to start adjusting. We can turn up our burn back, set our inductance. Of course, I scrolled right past it. Set our inductance, set up our spot welding mode. Then we can go down. We can set up our wire diameter. That's to help set us up for power set. So of course, we still have power set on all the modes. So you can always go to power set, brings our O35 wire back into power set, and then we can set up our, our material thickness. We can still adjust our pre-flow and post-flow as well as our burn back and our inductance. On this unit as well, we do have a, a nice feature for those of us that, uh, or those of you that are outside of the US, we can do inches per minute or we can do a metric, uh, metric equivalent. So for those that are in like Australia or Canada, if you want to use the metric system um, that didn't go to the moon yet, then you can, you can use that. Let's go ahead and go out of power set mode and we can rotate through our different modes. So we've got our CO2 mode. We can take it off of power set. Same exact menu. It's just when we go to power set, it's calibrated for 100% CO2. So that's what these are for up here along the top. So if we like say we go over to aluminum, the, the machine on the manual side is not going to function any differently than it would if we were on argon CO2 mix. It's just calibrating the machine for the power set mode when we go into it or if you go into it. So if you were to go into power set mode on argon CO2, but you're running aluminum, you're not going to have your aluminum options available to you. So just something to keep in mind. Manual mode, it doesn't matter so much. It's really setting the machine up for the correct calibration when you go into power set mode. So go into power set mode. And then we've got all of our calibration um, for aluminum. So we can come back here. We skipped over it real quick. 263 PI. The three is for pulse. The P is for single pulse. 
So this machine does have single pulse capabilities uh, with power set as well. So uh, as you come down in the menu, kind of the same thing here. This isn't going to really affect how the machine works. It's going to calibrate it more for the power set mode. In manual mode, it's just basically calibrating it for power set if you choose to go over to it. So we can go down, we can set our wire size. So we're going 045 wire. We've got our different aluminum wire types. You can go steel, it's just a steel wire type. And then we've got our stainless steel wires as well. So it's just calibrating the machine for going over to power set mode if you so desire. So we'll go ahead and set it to 5356, hit power set. So same power set mode. One of the really nice features with the new menu revision is as we are adjusting within power set, you can see the little slider on our ramp changes color. So green, obviously we're kind of in the Goldilocks zone. We start going yellow. We're starting to get kind of high or low. And then obviously we go to the extreme. It starts turning red just as a heads up, like, hey, you're getting way, you know, you're getting way from uh, the center. So maybe recheck, you know, what you're doing or uh, check your setup. So same thing, high and low. Nice, easy power set mode. We've gone through and reworked all the power set mode settings and calibration. So they're a lot closer on the new units uh, than they were previously. So one of the biggest complaints uh, with power set is that it was a little bit hot and it was a little bit hot. We did that for different various reasons, but it was set a little hot. We've gone through, reworked them. They're a lot closer to being pretty much dead perfect now. So uh, a lot, a lot more usable for, for people that are starting out. All right, so let's go ahead and take it out of power set mode. We can run through and show you guys what else we have. Of course, we have our stainless steel uh, flux core, no gas, just straight flux core. We have flux core with gas, dual shield, uh, DC lift TIG, and then DC stick. So now that we've kind of gone through, the menus for all those are gonna be the same. Like I said, we kind of said they're, they're just for setting up, going over to power set mode. Uh, one of the biggest complaints we've had previously about our, our program save function, uh, while it did save the programs, it was hard to know what you had that program set up for. So if uh, you had a program on program three that you really liked for a part, and then maybe you didn't run that particular material, that thickness for four or five months, maybe you forgot that that was uh, program three for that. So one thing we've done, we've gone back through and recoded the, the program save. So if you do a, a quick press, it'll go to recall. And this is important to pay attention to. So if you're on recall, it is just allowing you to select your saved programs and then you would go back to, uh, well, you would go back to it. So it would pick that program and then load that program. If you want to actually write a program, what you need to do is press and hold the button for five seconds, four, five. So now it says save recall. In order to unlock the program, we scroll down to it. So let's say we're gonna do, in this case, we're gonna do number three. It is locked at the moment. We hit power set, it unlocks, and we are able to select with the left button. We select that op and open up our keyboard menu. So we can, let's say this is gonna be, we're gonna just name it something. We'll just call it Slick Mig. So we type in our name. We just use the right dial to scroll through. We use the left dial to select. So we'll call it Slick Space. So slick mig, we'll just roll back through. And we see we come over to our save and cancel. So we go to save. So now our program three is called slick mig. It can be whatever you want. Um, let your imagination run wild with how you want to name those. It will allow it. But that makes it a lot easier to remember, you know, if you had a, a program for eighth inch mild steel or a program for three sixteenth stainless, or you had a, a really nice pulse profile setup for aluminum. It allows you to select that. You could name it, you know, pulse aluminum uh, half inch, pulse aluminum one sixteenth. So it makes the, the save program menu a lot more organized. So again, we just save that. We can hit the recall. And now that recall is in program three with our, our custom name. So it makes it a lot easier to keep track of those programs. So 
Uh, it's been a long time complaint. We try to listen as much as we can and there we go. So now we've got custom named programs on, on all of our MIG units now. So really, really, really nice feature. Uh, something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And we're going to see that trickle down uh, to other models that have LCD displays. You're going to see that, uh, that custom naming feature uh, trickle down throughout, throughout the lineup. So just a quick little overview of the 263PI. Uh, remember 263, the threes for pulse. It is a PI, not a DPI. So it's a single pulse MIG, not a dual pulse MIG. Um, and it does have DC lift TIG. So super handy machine. Um, if someone does a lot of general fab and you do have some aluminum work that comes in, the pulse MIG, especially with the power set, is going to make getting into pulse MIG a whole lot easier. So um, we'll say quick run through today, just kind of show you how the menus work, show you how to save programs. We're going to have a lot more content with this machine coming up where we run through you know, each process and really dive deeper into it, show you how to get it set up properly and show you some examples of uh, just how powerful this unit is. So that's all for today. Stay tuned. You'll see a lot more of this unit in the near future.